"'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. Hello, my Catholic family. I'm Miss Leslie, and I am here to talk to you about a wonderful Catholic saint. His name, St. Nicholas. Nicholas was born in the third century in a little village in what is today southern Turkey. His family, his mother and father, were pretty wealthy, but they were also very dedicated Christians, and they raised their son Nicholas to be a good, strong Catholic man. He had a devotion to Jesus Christ, to the church Jesus founded, and to Our Lady, Mary, the Mother of God. St. Nicholas lost his parents when he was a young boy. They died during a terrible plague in their region. But because his parents had been quite wealthy, Nicholas inherited a great deal of money. And what did Nicholas do with this? Well, Nicholas immediately began to take care of the poor and needy in his area. Nicholas devoted his life to serving the poor, those who are sick, those who have very little. And he became well known in his area for doing just this. Nicholas was so devoted to his church and to Jesus that he began to study for the priesthood. And eventually he was ordained a priest. When Nicholas was a very young man, he was promoted to the position of Bishop of Myra. Now, during this time, there was a lot of persecutions. This was under the Roman Emperor Diocletian, and many of our priests and our bishops were thrown into jail. Nicholas was one of them. In fact, it was said by many historians of that time that because the persecutions throughout Rome were so great that there were more priests and bishops in prison than people who were considered actual criminals. Nicholas, as bishop, suffered greatly for the church. He was driven from his home in Myra. He was thrown into prison. But even while he was there, he made sure that he ministered to those other people that were in prison with him, in particular, other members of our faith who were in prison for no other reason than for being Catholic. Though these people suffered greatly, they stayed true to the faith, and eventually Rome ended up with a brand new emperor. The Emperor Constantine was raised by a devout Catholic mother. Her name was Helena, and we know her today as Saint Helena. Because of his love for his mother, Emperor Constantine issued an edict in the year 313, and it's a very famous proclamation known as the Edict of Milan. This edict allowed people like you and I to be able to practice our faith legally and not have to worry about being thrown in prison for doing so. And our bishops and our priests were released from prison. Emperor Constantine asked for the Bishop of Rome to call a council of all the bishops so that they could discuss the truths of the Catholic faith and be able to hand them on to all those people who wanted to be good Christians. And it was called in the year 325. Bishop Nicholas attended this council and stood firm for the truths of the Catholic faith. He also helped to shape the very teachings you and I have today here in Modesto. One of the things that Bishop Nicholas contributed to is something that we recite today in Mass. That's right, the Nicene Creed. We are grateful to Bishop Nicholas and to all of the bishops who attended the Council of Nicaea and helped to write the Nicene Creed. Because of them, you and I can stand firm at Mass and recite that creed and be grateful for all of those things that they handed down to us from the apostles those things that help to make us good Catholics. Bishop Nicholas died on December the 6th, and it is that day that he entered into heaven. And so it is December 6th 
which is the Feast of St. Nicholas. Many stories and legends have been told about St. Nicholas. All of these stories reveal his character, in particular, his love for the poor. One of the most famous stories of St. Nicholas is how he helped a poor man who had three daughters. Now these daughters were of the age when they could get married. And in those days, it was important for the parents of the woman getting married to provide her husband a dowry. This meant money or goods or animals that the woman would take with her to her new home with her husband. But this man was very poor. He did not have money for a dowry for one daughter, let alone for three. And those daughters were in danger not only of not being able to be married, but eventually being sold into slavery if their father died. So St. Nicholas took three bags of gold and in the dead of night, he went onto the roof of their home now the daughters had hung their stockings by the chimney fire in order to dry them after being washed. So the story goes that St. Nicholas threw the bags of gold down the chimney and they landed in the women's stockings. And because of those bags of gold, they had a dowry and they were able to be married. Sometimes today you will see a sign for a business known as a pawn shop where people will take their goods and they will lave their goods with the people and get money for them. The signs usually have three gold balls and those three gold balls represent the bags of gold that St. Nicholas threw down the chimney for the three young women who were too poor to be married. The stories of St. Nicholas spread throughout all of Europe. Because of the time of year of his feast day, it became a custom for people to exchange gifts on the feast of St. Nicholas. My family is from Italy. And when my mother was very little, my grandmother would get chocolates covered in gold foil. And the night before St. Nicholas's feast day, while all the children were asleep, she would put these chocolates into their stockings and put them outside their door. Later, when I was a little girl and the custom for giving gifts moved more towards Christmas Day, my mother would get those same little gold covered candies. And we always had a package of those in our Christmas stockings every morning on Christmas Day. During this time of year, we should keep in mind St. Nicholas and what his life teaches us. We need to remember that St. Nicholas cares for the poor, for the marginalized, for those who have no safe place to live, no food, no goods. He cares about them and you and I should also care about them. And we need to ask ourselves, what can we do during Advent season, and especially to honor St. Nicholas? What can we do to make sure that we have done our part to take care of these people? You know, one of the things that you and I could do would be to make a donation of food to the pantry here at St. Joseph's, so that when they put together bags of food for people at Christmas time, we know that we have done our part, as St. Nicholas would do, to make sure that those with less than we have have been taken care of and know that they are loved. We know, as Catholics, that we can honor St. Nicholas by being generous with our goods and being generous with our prayers during this wonderful time of Advent. St. Nicholas, pray for us. Goodbye, everybody. Have a wonderful Advent, and I hope to see you all soon.